I'm just going to sit down a minute and I'm going to talk about some of these men. Incidentally, uh, I brought along a list of Sports Southside Club members, uh, which I don't know whether any of you have seen this. This came out of the uh, the booklet, uh, that I, the old Oakdale stories. Uh, if you'd be interested, you, you might want to sort of pass them around, see if you recognize any names. Uh, one, one name on there is, has the name Havmeyer. <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is an, a short aside, uh, but uh, uh, Thomas J. Havmeyer was a brother of my grandfather's, and uh, he became a member in 1874. And uh, he never married. He was a confirmed bachelor, we thought, until <laughs> until he died. <laughs> and after he died. <coughs> Somebody claimed to be his wife. <laughs> but uh, that claim didn't get very far. <laughs> so I don't know whether I'm proud to be associated with Thomas Havmeyer or not, but I'm very proud to be the grandson of my, of my grandfather. But Thomas was not my grandfather. He had no children. So uh, that's just a little tale about one South Side, uh, one South Side member. All right. Now, the club has come into existence. It's 1866. I'm going to sit down for just a minute. I want to read a quote just for a minute from uh, a paragraph. This is from my book. Uh, It, it is the tavern, Hobie's Tavern. It had become so popular with the sportsmen and the space at the inn was so limited that a few of New York's guests felt a time was needed. A change was needed. Among these were Bayshore and Islip summer residents, Bradish Johnson, George W. Wil Wilmerding, and Shepard Knapp. On Ap April 6, 1866, the club was chartered for, quote, the protection, increase, and capture of salmon, trout, and game. Those were the three things. Its constitution limited membership to not more than 100 men of 21 years or older. And it had an initial capital raised by subscription of $50,000. The land, well, I'll skip over that because you know about the land. You've heard about the land in other lectures. But it started, as best I can tell, of about 900 acres, but then greatly increased. Four miles from Islip, a little off the road, is the clubhouse of the celebrated Southside Sportsman's Club. Now, I, I want to talk, I want to talk a little about these founders. And before I before I do that, uh, let me say this about the membership. Uh, a certain proportion of the members here, right from the beginning, and even from before the beginning, had homes on the south shore of Long Island. Many did not have homes. Many used this club by coming out from New York on the train, or by, in the earliest days, by coach later by train, and they used it as a, uh, an activity, a weekend activity, or a week activity, or a month's activity, uh, but they did not have a second home on the South Shore. But the group that I can talk most about, and I think are m the most interesting, are those that did have a home on the South Shore, and quite nearby because they were among the founders. And I think you can argue, you can argue this two ways. One way is that it helped to found the club to have these members living here uh, beforehand. Uh, 
uh, but you could also argue, and you could also argue that if there hadn't been any uh, local residents uh, as members, that the club might have expired long before it did. I think having so many and many members live around this area was was helpful in keeping the club going for as long as it did, which was a very long time considering the life of clubs. I know some of us were sad when this club uh, had to stop it being a club, but uh, it lasted for a very long time as clubs go.